of the Dragonshire game that you guys posted for me. So I'm just going to kind of talk through thoughts of the video. Um, first thought as far as draft goes, um, uh, my initial thinking is that you definitely need to know what your comp excels at here. And in this case, with the Murd and Maev especially, uh, with Jaina for blow up, I think you guys have an opportunity to catch them in rotation. So I'm hoping to see you guys be aggressive when you're rotating between lanes for kills. Um, but the biggest factor and the X factor, in my opinion here, is going to be the Zero Tool play from the other side. Uh, just because of how vulnerable that potentially could leave, especially Jaina. Uh, especially with a Dahaka. They have the potential to have two heroes in your back line without prior notice at any time. So your primary concern is going to be keeping track of Zero Tool. Um, keeping enough pressure in top lane that you can occupy Dahaka and or Zero Tool enough that they can't focus too much on your four man. Um, as well as making sure that when you are contesting bottom shrine and middle that you're aware of Dahaka's cooldown and not overstretching yourselves to leave the backline vulnerable because you do have a great dive. You have a great crowd control to pull someone out of position, especially Hanzo Mouth. Uh, but if you mistime it or are not aware of where Zero Tool are or if Dahaka can come in, that could leave your backline very exposed. So those are the things I'm looking for here. Uh, in the game when we're seeing how you guys do. Uh, the one pick that I would be curious about in your draft is with specifically Deckard. Um, I think he kind of fits better with more of a backline, poke it out to kind of engage, and you've gone with a fairly hard engaged lineup. I know he can get some pretty decent crowd control, especially taking Sapphire to allow Maev to get a dec more decent engage. But you're going to have a hard time hitting the heroes you want to target with that, which is Hanzo and Malfurion. Because if he steps forward at all, Tahaka pulls him back and Zeratul can blow him up pretty easily. So, that'd be the one question I have, is why the Deckard with this composition specifically? Uh, my second question would be with Sonya. I don't mind it at all. She does great into Dahaka. I would just be curious to know when and where it was drafted. If it was taken after the Zero Tool, I think it's potentially dangerous. Uh, just because she does have great clear and wins the 1v1. But of the solo laners available, um, she's maybe one of the more vulnerable just because of her lack of escape. Um, so I'm thinking, I think maybe something like a Yorel would have been really good here. Don't know if she was banned. Uh, but her sturdiness is just a lot higher. So that, those would be the two picks I wonder about, especially Deckard, but also wondering where the Sonya was drafted. So those are my, those are my initial draft thoughts. Uh, let me know what you guys think once you've, once you've seen this. But, um, yeah, we'll see how it plays out as we go through it. I think overall here, uh, I like the Maev coming down. I think you guys maybe could have been a little more aggressive just because Zeratul takes a little bit while to scale up. So I maybe would have liked to see all five start mid, see if you can get a pull stun blow up on one of your targets. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, rotate out. So I think you maybe could have been a little more aggressive because between the comps, I think your immediate level one is better. So try to take advantage of that potentially a little bit more. But I do like the Maev coming down here to soak. Now with Hanzo there, I think you know Hanzo was bought in doing that. And so you know Maev is going to be coming up. I think a potential better play than continuing to scrabble here would be to back off bait a little bit because they're past halfway. Maev's getting ready to rotate up. I would like to see being a little bit safer here, waiting for your cooldowns, and Akib letting you know he's coming, and I would look. I would like to see you guys try to catch them here. Because watch where they rotate through once you guys are done 
brawling a little bit, they're going to rotate right through here, right where my Ev is. And so, C-Dub, if you're healthier, you have a 4v3 engage here because uh, Hanzo is still clearing. So this would have been a great opportunity if you know that Akib has come down here. Even if Hanzo matches, you don't really have a reason to fight there. You're not going to kill anybody with that. You're just kind of trading cooldowns and burning mana. So try to save it for when you're going to be having a keep come up and have a more efficient brawl. Because then even if you don't get someone here, you've probably chunked them enough to force a response either in them backing or uh, more safely rotating. You'll have at least scared them, which then gives you an advantage in lanes. So more patient here. I'd like to see a quicker engage, all five, even with Sonya. Backing off more once Akib comes bottom. And then being more aggressive at the right time. And I like C-Dub's positioning here. I think maybe you guys could have coordinated this a little bit better. Jane is a little bit isolated. Um, so I'd like to see you stay in his four a little bit more. If a minute or two is missed, I don't think that's too much of a problem, as long as you're getting kills to compensate. But Jaina can't do anything here. They've zoned her out completely. Right? So if you're all if you're all going to come bottom, I'll go bottom. And then rotate together aggressively. But you guys got to decide whether you're doing one or the other. I like camp getting started here. I'd like to maybe see Muradin check and see if they're doing theirs as well. They are showing three in the map. Zeratul's not there. So a quick check might do you some good as long as you can remain safe. Now, overall, I like your positioning. Jaina had to back for health and mana. So at this point, you're just looking to maintain control. You have all three lanes covered, so this is fine. I would, again, still like to see more of a group. Because getting control of this shrine is great. But there's no way they're going to be getting mid right now with Maiev here. Maiev's going to be able to control that. And Sonya's going to be able to contest this. Potentially getting it, potentially not, but she probably wins that duel as long as their tool is kept here. So I'd like to see, they're going to be, these two have to deal with the Giants. That's going to take time. I'd either like to see, push this in, create a response, get the shrine, rotate mid, or push this in, force a response here, and then rotate down to get some keep some front wall damage. Uh, you're kind of split again, and I know Jane was backing, but even when she she's almost there, and so I still would like to see more of a group. Your, your comp is strongest as four, especially against something like a Zero Tool Diablo. Your weak, like, Blinky and C-Dub are not going to get anything accomplished here other than holding a point. Your wave clears with Jane and Maiev. So I would like to see more of a group to keep your damage together to get a little more accomplished. Because otherwise you're, again, still just trading cooldowns and getting less accomplished than you normally could have. All right, so that, that could have been avoided. Um, it was a lot of needless damage taken just because you weren't going to accomplish anything. Which, again, essentially means your Giants didn't accomplish much. Like, you're getting the advantage uh, mid by forcing rotation, but these Giants, for them, are getting a lot more value. Now, this is definitely a situation where, with them missing, I saw someone pinging. This is definitely where you want to be aware of Zeratul. He hasn't been seen in a while. He was backing, but he could be anywhere. So, Ginger, I know we haven't watched much of your top lane yet, but this will be where we need to keep track of it. All right, I like this pressure here. But again, very split. 
Okay, so I think the the pressure here is good, but it's got to be done with a sense of what you're going to be able to accomplish elsewhere, right? So getting this point here is your primary concern. If you have Maev, I think you can reasonably get Diablo, but without her, you're really just forcing him off, which I think means we need to be a little bit safer here, right? But even even then, with with two off the map, the pressure the pressure being here is what really matters. Right. Otherwise, the goal should be getting vision and clearing more safely. Because pushing this lane in is great, but at the same time, if you can't have vision, I think it needs to be a little bit safer. Now, this is very aggressive. Zeratul showed mid, but Malph is already here, and you're at best a 3v3. Sonya has top. If Zeratul stays here to defend mid, which he doesn't really need to because he has vision of all four of your alive heroes, then he's going to be able to clear and get an XP advantage. You're accomplishing nothing right now. Even if you hold this point, Maev's dead for five more seconds. You're not going to control anything. Zeratul is either staying here and getting a, a soak advantage from minions, or he's rotating down to get a gank. Neither of those are in your advantage, so this should be backing off much sooner. Because all that does is open you up to an engage that is not in your favor. Or gives him... Because he, if he stays here, you're still losing this... Uh, your position right now, because he gets a whole wave without you soaking it. So someone need... You guys needed to back off here, and someone needed to rotate safely around to catch potentially Zeratul, clearing that if he doesn't rotate down. So I like this attempt on Zero Tool. That's a good trade. Leaves a lot lower. Does expose your whole keep front wall a little bit. But since you lose somebody, that's, that's part of the deal. Now, Zero Tool at this point is showing mid. You either have to decide, are we going in hard here? Or are we going to send someone to catch so? Because you guys are about a level behind at this point because of their advantage and rotations of what they're able to do. Right? Zero Tool is able to do this without really much punishment, and they have three kills. I think that's really what's pushing it forward. Okay? So, I think you guys have missed some waves, and with the kill disadvantage, Zero Tool's gaining the advantage right now for their team. This is a tough spot to fight unless you can get a pull. So I think the better play here would have been to send somebody here earlier. Probably uh, probably could have been Jaina, just safely soaking. Maev might be a safer one because she can potentially rotate through through Zeratul easier. But that's a lot of that's a lot of soak lost. Now Zeratul hasn't shown for a while. Not going to be a lot of threat here because Dahak is back. But that's a good, that's a good rotation from Dogwell, I think. You're probably going to be able to hold this just fine. I don't know if I like dying for this here. I think you actually could have backed off C-Dub. Because once a keep starts channeling it, well, maybe not. I think you could have left right there and been fine. Because this essentially is going to wind up weakening your, your objective by quite a bit. So you get the objective, but at what cost? I think if you lose it there, if you don't get the dragon... And you back off. Maev and Jaina just rotate down. They clear the wave, catching you up in XP. They rotate down. 
Murden backs off and regains from his trait, second wind. You guys then re-engage, you now have a 4v3. So getting the objective is great, but I don't think dying there was worth it. I think it's okay to back off as long as you communicate that to each other. Get my Evan Jane to rotate down and force the 4v3. If they back off and don't let you take it, well then you get the shrine and then you can potentially hold, you know, attempt to hold it that second time. Overall, though, this is fine. As many front walls as possible is going to be what you want here, especially having been down somebody. Um, these, uh, and I've mentioned this last season a little bit, but the blizzards need to be full value as much as possible when if they're used without much follow-up or intent it's gonna i don't think this one hits anybody but if that's dropped here not only are you getting wall damage but you're also getting hero damage something like frostbolt especially with your build if you miss it not a big deal cone of cold also not too big a deal it's lower cooldown lower mana cost blizzards you gotta get full value from. Um, I think there was one or two other ones too that in this game needed to be more value. But this one in particular, you, you're not gonna get a kill by it landing more, but you are gonna chunk Hansa more and force him to play safer. So make sure that when you do your blizzards, you're, you're using those with a purpose that's gonna be tangibly apparent. Now, I think 100% you guys need to be grouped for this. If the call here is that zero tools, because I don't know what your comms were, but you, you definitely see him mid, and probably Ginger has been talking to you about the fact that zero tool was pressuring Ginger here as he rotated. So you've seen zero tool here a while. Pretends they're not going to be able to respond yet, because they're still clearing bottom. Your last chance to engage before well I guess, I guess they do have tens now so that's a little bit different but your your split here is what i want to focus on into tens if you get this kill that's great but dog will has split so either this needs to be an all in trying to get the pick before tens which i think is feasible or you back off you soak here you clear the camp and keep vision it's got to be one or the other all four of you at once because this only this only puts you in danger, right? C-Dub's lagging behind. Jane is here. Two are isolated. They have tens now with APOC VP. So I I don't mind the attempt. I mean, that's what your comp is designed to do is get a kill like that. And Zero Tool got chunked hard, got good CC. If you just have one... Jane a rotation of spells and a Stormbolt for Muradin, I, th I think that's a kill. And I think you might be able to get out of there if, if everyone's there immediately. If he gets this far, he was able to get this far, I think he's safe. But if C-Dub's able to jump in there and stun, and you pull him back to this area, your retreat path is much easier. So just make sure you're clearly deciding what you want to do a little bit better and a little bit more succinctly with an idea of what the game situation is. I like this bruiser call, but not at the expense of XP. Especially with a Jaina, just clear this first and then rotate. So they have been off map for a long time. You can safely assume that they're at those places I do think that bruiser is going to give you some good map pressure. Giving you a chance to come down and defend. 
I think this should be a fight. Right now. Brush stalk was used. You have a camp pushing, even if you get an engage and it doesn't work. Killing that uh, spell armor is a good idea before engaging. Now, you're very disjointed. The communication should be from a key, the targeting of who you want to go in on. C dubs following up, still talking about who's storm bolting. Dogwill's got to be up here more. Okay. Uh, Blinky, I also want to see you up a little farther because I know the worry is a little bit about getting charged from Diablo, but is with just Hanzo and Zero Tool showed mid, with just Hanzo, Mouth, uh, and if you're keeping track of cooldowns, you should know whether Twilight Dream is up. It's not. It still has 30 seconds left. This should be... If he, if he pushes you here, that allows you just to get the snap engage as well. Right? With Warden's Cage, Ring of Frost, that's what you want to be looking for. This blizzard has to be saved if you're having the communication of we're engaging. Because what happens is you get a good you get a good Warden's Cage, C-Dub's in the thick of it, you get a good ring. But without Blizzard, he's able to survive just long enough. If you have Blizzard there, it changes that fight. That's about as good an example of Blizzard needing to be max value as anything. Just the simple fact that Blizzard was used when it shouldn't have been. Uh, and it was slightly late follow-up from the support and one of the damage dealers for a best engage possible. That delay allowed Zero Tool to get there and allowed Malf to survive because the burst wasn't quite high enough. And that's what your comp is, is burst. So that tells me there is just a little bit, maybe poor communication about what you guys wanted to do. So that's going to be a situation where you guys have to be on the same page about what you want to accomplish. All right. Now, I know I haven't talked about the, the solo lane much, but Ginger, this is where I want you to be in here. And I'm, I'll maybe make a separate video where I watch the solo lane. All right. So so far, I haven't done much with the solo lane just because Sonya versus Dahaka. Sonya should win, which you have. So you should be able to keep control of the point, which you did. All four of them are bot. You see that. You've seen that. This is where you want to be pressuring. You can easily get that tower, maybe even get the get the well. But you're allowing not only Dahaka to get free clear, but you're not actually getting the soak from this minions either. If they leave, or once they get the fort, this is when you then say, okay, count 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000, 4-1000, 5000 now I leave. But you could have actually gotten some decent value, not only in pressuring Dahaka, but also in um, also in getting getting more structure damage, more XP gain from minions, and limiting your your level loss from that. So I think uh, I think this is a situation where you could have at least gotten a little bit of value elsewhere in the map. If you're going to back off as much as you did here, rotate mid and clear. But I think I think pressuring in here when you have vision of four bot is far better. Now, this is dangerous because uh, if they got the objective here and they already have bottom, they don't really need to stay here, they're going to be rotating up to either help Tahaka get this or if Tahaka wins to get the point. Right? Hanzo is showing now, and you haven't seen Zero Tool in a while. This isn't worth, especially without the talent, with, with a talent disparity. All right? Just stay back here, safely soak. And if you have to give the dragon, you have to give the dragon. Because you guys lost four members. I mean, that's going to be an objective win. right? But you're not going to accomplish anything here. Even if you win the 1v1 with the Haka, the, the ability of them to rotate so easily is too high. So I definitely want to see you back here more. And even if you survive here, you're going to be low enough that you're not going to be able to help at all. So all this does is stagger kills without really getting you... The best possible scenario is... Very inf unfavorable. Alright.
So at this point, you should just be trying to stall if you can. So that's a good stall. This, to me, is very ambitious. Uh, with a global up, down a talent, down a person. This, to me, seems very ambitious. You get the kill. But what I, my question is going to be in the end, what is accomplished? Unless you can completely stall. Now, you do wind up pushing them back. I'm going to watch that again. The engage wound up being good, which is what I think saved you guys. The good news here, at least, is that you guys were coordinated. Right? I guess with these two isolated, that actually is that actually winds up being better than I had initially thought. Yeah. Okay. So you do. You are able to force a four v two window. Okay. I like it better than I than I initially thought. It's a very fine line. I boy, I think they misplayed this a little pretty hard. Dahaka should have been there a lot sooner. If he is, I think that changes that fight. But congrats to you guys for recognizing a situation where you can force a four v two. Uh, before people are able to get there. So that's good. That's well done considering, I mean, you're up against it at that point, right? Down a talent, you got to take what you can get. So I think that's actually a pretty good, uh, a pretty good use of that. And you'll notice it was all four people doing it at once. And that's been different than when you guys were kind of split down here, when you guys have been split in this area. It was all four of you at once. So that part I'm really happy to see. That needs to happen more often and rather than it being in situations that are not favorable, in situations where that are favorable. <clears throat> now, I don't like this split. Mainly because the Zeratul factor. Um, I, th I think... If Sonya is going to be leaving top, I think Maev should stay here. Primarily because all you need is one shrine to be able to prevent them from getting it. You're, I think it's moderately unlikely that you're going to be able to get control of all three lanes, especially with this lane pushed out. So I think the delay should be here uh, with Maev. Because if Sonya goes top and they send someone to go with her, you now have a 4v3 here. If Dahaka stays here, he already brush stalked. Sony's going to get a free shine and free clear. Can rotate out if she needs to. You force the advantage. And Maev can stay here. I mean, you still have Warden's Cage, Ring of Frost. That's your primary two abilities that you need. Right? Plus, if Zeratul is unseen, Zeratul going top with Dahaka to get Sonya or bottom to get Maev, to me, is one of the more dangerous parts. So once, I think once you take top or bottom, you don't need everybody here, especially because there's no wave to clear. Again, this is needless brawling. This this doesn't accomplish anything for you. All it does is put Jaina and Blinky at risk, and you wind up trading cooldowns. Meanwhile, Zeratul is able to go wherever he wants and do whatever he wants. So I, th I think, I don't mind to keep rotating down, but either other people needed to come with, Akib or needed to wait until Sonya got top to actually do it. Because you just wind up weakening your... Again, this this is a situation where you split. So 14, 13, they've used all their heroics. I think you need to get some map control back. So I'd like to see I'd like to see this get taken care of. And maybe get some giants to get some pressure out to see if you can get bottom a little bit better. 
good. That's what you're doing. You don't have vision, so you do need to be careful. So I like the I like the anchoring here from C Dub. Once they show up, you leave. Good clear from Dog Bull. Even if all you do is clear bottom, that's that winds up being good for your favor. Now you're even talents. My F's coming in. Um, this is the zero tool factor, and the this is when um, one of the things that I mentioned in that document I made is uh, calling out your opposites and things like that. Whichever whoever zero tool is the opposite of, which I think would be my Ev. This has got to be maybe communicated a little bit more. Maybe it was communicated and you just gonna, didn't really get a chance to leave. But uh, this is the zero tool factor getting into play here of being able to essentially be a global without warning. Now, I'm glad you guys are – this is going to wind up being – I don't know what they were doing. Maybe they are expecting Tahaka to come in. But this is heavily in your favor. So excellent engage, especially if I'm guessing Ginger was communicating, hey, I've got two top, letting you guys know you had a 4v3. That was great. Excellent. I don't know why they engaged. They must have thought Dahaka was coming down. But now imagine how much stronger that engage would be if Sonya still, you know, is still here being safer. Because, again, Sonya getting that top shrine is great. But... The best thing that happens is you potentially delay it. The worst thing that happens is you die uh, forcing your team to have a hard time. Now, they get the DK, but with three kills, it's, it's probably not going to accomplish a whole heck of a lot. So, kind of a mixed bag. I think you guys win that trade, but not as hard as you could have. I like the split, especially with Zero Tool in the DK. You have a chance to see where he is at all times. I think uh, with two dead, Dahaka top, Diablo mid, I think... I think I think you guys probably could have cleared this to let it push out a little bit. But I, 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 would, I wouldn't mind if you cleared it. But I also wouldn't mind if you rotated here a little bit quicker. It looked like you guys were a little indecisive. Pick one or the other. Neither one's a bad choice. Because if Diablo rotates down like he did now, he's not going to be a threat by himself. Especially with Zeratul in the DK. So either clear and then rotate, or everybody rotate here and just let the Giants draw attention. Now, I like this aggressive setup because even though you're down 16s, two are bottom. Now, you do need to be aware of your cooldowns. So without my Ev, your ability to fully wombo is tough. It was a good attempt. I think that was smart to do, especially as five. It didn't work. You can now back off. They gained essentially nothing with that Dragon Knight except for Fort Walls. Again, good attempt because they're showing mid. Dahaka burrowed out. Now, I mean, now you're essentially going to have 16 and they didn't get much value. You are almost even structurally. You've gotten all the front walls. They've gotten all the front walls. The only difference is the fort. So overall, considering the kill count is 13 to 5, they've out-rotated you. They have a global and a zero tool. The I, I honestly think, to be honest, the beginning game was kind of rough for you guys. But considering that, you're not doing too bad XP-wise or uh, structure-wise. speed this up a little bit.
this is where Vision is going to be extremely important. This is where Murden and Maev working as mobile wards is going to be most important. If they don't have Vision, I think you... Uh... Let me see here. I really think you need to check this bush before you engage there. That's very, very risky to engage without vision of all of them and with Dahaka mid. Because if Dahaka's here, okay, they've showed. But if if Dahaka's here and they're all in that bush, that's a 5v4 for them. But Ginger, I like that you're safe. I like this bottom camp call. If you trade forts, I think that's in your favor. Now, loss of vision. But I like this aggression. Now, that is a good blizzard value, Dog Bowl. Traded one for one so far. With a camp pushing, I really like that you guys were aggressive. Okay, that that was really good, especially considering that they had to rotate such a long way. Keeb, look at you, man. Look at you. Jeez. Now, that went about as good as it could have, I think. That's the strength of staying is five, especially late game. Very very good. Now, the question is, a 4v2 trade, you don't have... You have some siege with Sonya into only a Diablo who can pull you over a wall, so that's risky. So what's your play? You don't have much of this camp left, and my ev is low. Uh, I would like to see Sonya getting this after Murden gets the point. Uh, I, I think rotating all the way top is not a bad thing with Murden while Sonya gets this and Maiev backing and then coming to get DK. I think that's probably your strongest play because you're going to get more lane pressure bottom to prevent them from retaking bottom. Uh, Maiev is going to be able to be fully healed and head uh, time that pretty well. And Sonya can head mid to either get a camp or pressure this out to make it harder for them to stall. And you have twenty you had twenty seconds to do all that. So how efficient can you be? I think I think you definitely could have gotten this in time. Pushing this out is good too. But this will help you hold bottom without needing to send heroes there. So that'd be the value. It's not just the lane pressure, but the fact that it's gonna continue to give you vision make it hard for harder for them to get bottom. But I don't I don't mind you coming here immediately. If that's gonna allow you to get a Dragonite faster. But all this running around doesn't do you much. If you're gonna come mid, clear it. Be ready for DK. Although it looks like you guys want my F to get it, which is fine. But if that's the case, you could have gotten this. You don't really need to be here because you have vision of Diablo that whole time and Hanzo was dead. So make use of your time by either getting the camp or clearing it. Because if you get that camp, that's going to again allow Maev to just get it right away. I'm sorry, if you clear mid, that allows her to get it right away. Maybe give you a little bit more lane pressure with the Dragon Knight. I like that you guys are coming as five for this. That's exactly what you want to do. Okay, now this is the situation where you guys need to have a flank protection. And that is, Murden's job as the main front line is going to be to protect from the front. Ginger, your job, especially with Maev and the DK, whichever one of you is not in the DK, needs to be in this bush, right here. 
You've got to offer some kind of flank protection, specifically with Zeratul and a Dahaka. That bush is prime. Zeratul could potentially come through here, but you're probably going to see the Shimmer if you're over here. So the Bruiser or some form of person that can be a ward needs to be here. Because, look, you're just running around anyway because their threat of pulling over the wall is so big. If you're not going to do anything anyway with sieging, be in the bush. Because I don't know what I don't know what uh, random task is doing and what he's trying to accomplish other than blinking in, blinking out, and that's fine. He gets some value, but if they were good, they would have Zeratul here to hock in one of these lanes, pressuring out for twenty. Once they get close, getting ready for a VP APOC combo with Twilight Dream to hock a burrow in it. Dragon Zero. That's what they're going to be looking for. So you got to be able to have vision of that. Now, I don't like this engage. Uh, especially with C-Dub going in here, you're all inning for the keep. And they have, they they now match you in Wombo, especially without the sleep. With Lornado, especially Lornado on cooldown. A VP APOC, Dragon Arrow, Twilight Dream means, especially with you guys being this grouped, you guys are dead. This is just this is just too far. Fighting with it to try to get a kill, I don't think is bad, but you're missing so much of your control with Maev, I don't think it helps you. Okay, so an early avatar just encourages people to fight when they don't need to. I think you just poke with Jaina. I think you spear slam with Sonya. Protect flanks. Save all of your cooldowns. If you get the keep, great. If you don't, it's now low, and you now have the structural advantage. But this, especially going this far, if, if you get dragged or rooted, you're now taking shots. Like, that has to be a kill if you're going to do that. And that places so much pressure on getting the kill that if it doesn't happen, you're screwed. If you do get it, you still might not be able to win anyway because the DK is almost dead. But with my Evan the Dragon, and uh, th this allowed them to get to the back line by A, you guys engaging at all, and B, going that far. So you do get the keep, but at what cost? So this is going to wind up. Once everything's burnt. <clears throat> I think you guys still could have salvaged it. Jaina died earlier. Let me rewind it just a tad. At this point, you need to let Maev die. Right here. C-Dub, Ginger, and Blinky. You need to keep running. You re-engage both of you. Just keep running. Let a keep die. They'll have a 5v3 for 60 seconds. They may get a keep. They may match you with it. But if you all die here, the only thing that does is potentially open up your entire map to get decimated. If you have 5v3, you can still poke them down. You can still defend and deter them from doing anything. But a 5v0, staggered deaths, that sh I mean, to be honest, that should be game for them. And you'll notice, Maev still got out. Or, nearly. Nearly got out. You guys followed her in here, and she was the one that actually survived the longest. If you guys all leave there, Maev still might live. Probably not, but might. So you have potentially still four people remaining. Three at worst. I'm actually amazed that they didn't wind up taking this game. Honestly, Random Tash should not have gotten that keep. That really didn't help him at all. I'm sorry, that, that camp. 
So they're very clumped. Good for you. Ah, they miss. Okay, so Dragon are missing and you getting your ring off, I think, is going to be what wound up. Good targeting of Hanzo. That's perfect. You were able to distract them just enough. Like, look at all this non-focus on the core. If they just hit the core, I think they win. So, nice job engaging. That's about as good as you could have hoped for. And I think you guys just go the other way and win, right? Yeah, I think DK is fine here. You're guaranteed to get it. And going without it just risks the possibility that they kill you. But I think you maybe could have just gone core. All right. GG. Well done. Good job using your Wombos late. I think the biggest thing is going to be better use of them early. Better decisions of how you want to engage early and understanding what the strengths of your comp are. Uh, better communication about when to use your most important cooldowns. Uh, better position to be able to prepare, prepare for some of those engages. Uh, but otherwise, nice job holding out. Um, when you lose the early game like that and they get a core push like that, it can be demoralizing. So well done uh, keeping your cool. All right. This will be on YouTube hopefully. So this is my first time doing this. Let me know what you guys think.